In a world where kings are ranked by a mysterious organization that claim to represent the gods, Boji is the crown prince of Bose Kingdom. Born mute and deaf, Boji is relatively seen by most of the public as a dumb and useless prince. One day, Boji sneaks out of the castle to an open field where he meets Kage. Kage, upon spotting Boji, attempts to rob him, telling him to hand over his money. This, however, reveals Boji's inability to speak or hear but that he can read lips to understand what Kage is saying. Boji agrees to instead hand over his expensive-looking clothes and promises that he will return wearing more. Kage lets Boji go as he walks through the town in only his crown and underwear. Boji surprisingly keeps his promise to Kage and repeatedly returns with more and more clothes for Kage to take. After several days of repeating the process, Kage grows curious and follows Boji as he walks through the town barely clothed. Kage sees Boji getting gossiped and mocked by everyone as he returns to the castle. Bumping into his stepmother Queen Healing and her entourage, Boji is scolded for embarrassing the royal family by walking around without clothes. Healing lets out her opinion that Boji is unfit to be king unlike his little brother Data, which was accidentally translated into sign language by Domas, Boji's sword instructor. Boji is called to an audience with his father, King Bose the warrior giant, and heads to his room to get dressed with Kage following closely behind. As Boji leaves to meet his father, Kage also leaves but is confronted by Bevin, Prince Data's sword instructor and mentor. Bebin notices Kage is from the Shadow Clan, a group of cursed people who are infamous for being assassins but were wiped out by their own kingdom. Boji enters his father's chambers who ask him about his recent actions of public nudity, while Kage is busy evading attacks from Bebin, who thinks he is here to assassinate someone in the castle. King Bose is visibly sick, coughing up blood as he tells Boji that although he loves him, he is worried about the kingdom if Boji is to rule. King Bose tells Boji to grow stronger and looks at Domas asking him to train his son harder. Meanwhile, Kage finally escapes from Bebin by throwing his dagger towards him and blending into the shadows. Moments later, a visibly upset Domas rampages at the training equipment, frustrated at his failure to nurture Boji's strength. Boji's little brother, Prince Data, approaches the two and asks for a match against Boji, but Domas replies that Boji isn't ready but instead agrees to a match against Data. The two fight it out intensely with Domas acknowledging Data's kingly strength. Although Domas wins the bout, he is very impressed at Data's potential, which reminds him of King Bose himself. Inspired by the fight, Boji challenges Data to a friendly match, to which a group of spectators have now gathered, ready to witness the match between princes. Boji and Data fight, most are expecting Data to win, except for Hokuro, a soldier in the castle who knew of Boji's potential. Data's attacks are strong, but Boji skillfully dodges all of Data's attacks. Boji manages to hit Data back, but it is weak and does no damage. Everyone is impressed nonetheless by Boji's hidden talent for dodging. The fight continues the same, with Boji debating all of Data's attacks. The spectators, however, are starting to think that Boji's dodging is cowardly and dirty. Doma suddenly stops the fight and tells Boji that his fighting style is not kingly and that he should take the hits head on instead. Upon this request, Boji is unable to block Data's intense attacks due to his naturally weak physique and eventually loses the match sustaining heavy injury. The following night, an injured Boji, frustrated at his own lack of strength, cries as he tries to lift up a regular sword. Kage appears behind him and tells him that he was inspired by Boji and vows to become his friend no matter what. Boji is touched by Kage's words and cries. Later, Kage goes out on a walk while a mysterious woman comes in and heals Boji's injuries with magic. Kage encounters Bebin again and gets captured. The next morning, everyone is crying at the death of King Bose, and much to the surprise of everyone, it is revealed in King Bose's will that Prince Boji is to be the next king. Everyone is shocked as an eerie looking red demon comes gushing out of King Bose's corpse and points to Boji, before disappearing into thin air. Data comes back to his room and complains to the mysterious figure in the magic mirror who tells Data not to worry and that he will be crowned king instead. The following day, when they announce who is to be the next king, Boji is shocked when they announce it to be Prince Data instead, who will be crowned. It turns out a secret meeting took place before the announcement to internally vote to inaugurate Data as king instead. Everyone is shocked to learn that Doma supports Data instead of Boji. Boji runs away in shock as Kage is captured and held in the dungeon. Bebin then meets Boji who tells him that his friend Kage has left on a long journey and that he will never see him again. Boji, realizing something is wrong, runs around trying to look for Kage. He goes underground to ask Mitsumata, who tells him that his master Bebin indeed captured Kage but that he is safe. Prince Data, now the newly crowned king, orders Bebin to dispose of the people who didn't vote for him to be king in the secret meeting. Bebin suspects that Data might be too influenced by his magic mirror, but follows his orders regardless. As Apis leaves the kingdom after being told to resign, he encounters Bebin, who attacks Apis on the orders of King Data. Apis is killed enough, however, to repel Bebin and stabs him in the chest instead. Bebin falls in defeat and is seemingly absorbed into the ground. Back at the castle, Boji does not feel comfortable living in the castle anymore, and asks Healing to let him go on an adventure. Healing rejects the request and tells Boji that he is not capable of taking care of himself. 
Determined to go anyway, Boji begins to packing his bags to leave, before getting caught on the way out. Boji attempts to escape through the window this time, but is caught by Healing and Dorsha, who pulls him back up. The makeshift rope unwinds, however, causing Boji to fall down, causing a panic Healing to try and catch him. Boji falls down a long way before landing on top of his bag, cushioning the fall. Healing and Dorsha hurry downstairs to check on the injured Boji. Healing grits her teeth and uses her restorative magic to heal Boji, revealing to also be the woman who healed Boji the other night. Healing collapses from exhaustion as Boji regains consciousness. At night, Healing lays awake on her bed, rethinking of Boji's request to go out. The next morning, Healing finally agrees to let Boji go out on a simple journey to visit her parents' home, but only if he is accompanied by both Domas and Hokuro. Boji kisses Healing's cheek as a sign of gratitude, and the three depart for their journey. Some time later, a judge from the ranking of King's Committee arrives at Boji Kingdom, likely to judge Data's new ranking. The judge reminisces with a piece who reveals that the number one ranked king is allowed to choose an artifact from the Divine Vault, but that everyone who has ever done so always chooses the same one and goes mad. Meanwhile, the Magic Mirror tells Data that he would need to absorb his father's power, but Data turns her down in a bid for his own potential. Boji, Domas, and Hokuro arrive at a nearby town, and Boji quickly becomes separated and distracted in town. Hokuro looks for Boji and finds him sleeping near a fountain. He wakes him up only to find that Boji has lost his bag, and that it is probably stolen by some thief. Back in the kingdom, Data seems to have flunked the ranking and as a result has dropped to 90th place. Boji is again distracted by a butterfly and falls down a pitfall trap. There he meets the Mad King, and accompanies him as he prepares his dinner on top of a nearby cliff. The Mad King shows Boji a strange creature in the sky that eats animal souls and replenishes them back into the forest, and demands that Boji do the same dance he does to show gratitude to the creature. After an exhausting dance, their encounter is quickly disrupted after the Mad King hinted that he might sacrifice Boji, which causes Boji to run away and finally rejoin with his two escorts. Later, Boji, Domas, and Hokuro arrive at the entrance to Hell. Domas instructs Hokuro to find somewhere to stay while he invites Boji to take a closer look at the Cades of Hell. As Boji leans in to take a closer look over the cliff, Domas pushes Boji into the hole, hoping to kill him. It is revealed that Domas was sent by Data to kill Boji to prove his allegiance to him. Domas maniacally laughs over his actions before finally groveling to the ground in repentance. Meanwhile, after a bad dream, Data decides that it's finally time to obtain his father's power. He is led by the magic mirror towards a place deep under the castle where Data sees Bose's frozen corpse hanging in the middle of the room. Bose's frozen corpse is then put into a blender and concentrated into a goo-like substance. Data is then led to a different room where various rituals are conducted to create a suspicious looking drink. The magic mirror reaffirms Data that drinking the concoction will make him gain immeasurable power, but Data hesitates and eventually decides to not drink it. This indecision forces the magic mirror and Data into an altercation before it is interrupted with the sudden appearance of Apis. Apis tries to kill Data but is abruptly stopped by the mirror, who he recognizes to be Lady Miranjo, King Bose's former advisor and friend. After falling down, Boji is saved by a crossbow shooting a rope out from his bag which turns out to actually be Kage, who was sent by Bebin and has been hiding in his bag all along, saving him from various predicaments. They venture together deeper into the entrance until poison gas knocks both of them unconscious as they get picked up by mysterious figures on horses. Back on the surface, Domas returns from his attempted murder and encounters Hokuro, who asks him about Boji. Domas tells him that Boji is no longer around and Hokuro quickly deduces what Domas has done. The two get into a fight that ends with Domas knocking Hokuro out. Domas cleanly cuts his own hand off, seemingly as a gesture of guilt. Boji and Kage both end up in the underworld in front of Desha, the mighty king of the underworld. Kage asks confusingly if he can help train Boji into the strongest man in the world, a statement which was met with laughter by Desha. Desha then tasks Boji by pitting him against the captain of the Order of the Underworld, and the two quickly spar. Boji skillfully dodges all of the captain's attacks, but can't damage nor defeat the captain as well. Desha deems Boji of not having potential and rejects the request for tutelage. Kage pulls out a letter of recommendation from Bebin in a last effort attempt to get Desha to agree. Upon reading the letter, however, Desha rips the letter apart and kicks both Boji and Kage out. Confused at the predicament, the captain explains to them that the person that they are looking for is not Desha, but instead Prince Despa. Desha's younger brother. Equipped with this newfound knowledge, the two begin to depart once again in search of Despa. Meanwhile, back home, as Miranjo whispers something to Apis, Data manages to steal a sight in the midst of the confusion and catches Apis off guard. Both Apis and Miranjo pleads to Data to put down the weapon, explaining that the situation is now safe. As Data lowers his weapon, Apis knocks Data out with a swift punch, and the two begin to tie Data up and force feed him the suspicious concoction they've made earlier. It is revealed that it was not a strength potion, but instead a potion to resurrect King Bose into Data's body. Boji and Kage finally meet with Despa and explain to him the situation. Asking him for tutelage, Boji and Kage are invited inside Despa's home to assess Boji's potential. 
Despa reveals that Boji does not have any strength at all, which means that no matter how much he trains, he will never grow physically stronger. Disheartened by the situation, Boji limps out of Despa's home in defeat, before Despa tells Boji that since it is now his responsibility to nurture Boji, he will make him stronger even without physical strength. Boji wakes up every day, helps Kage with the chores, and begins his training with Despa until he passes out at night only to repeat the process again the next day. This continues for a while until Kage hears a loud noise one morning. He knocks on the door to check on Boji. Despa enters the door revealing that nothing is wrong, but Kage catches a glimpse of Boji, who stands in front of a broken boulder as the doors slowly close on a confused Kage. King Boze, now in Data's body, sits upon his throne reminiscing about the past. It is revealed that his immeasurable power actually comes from a demon who grant his wish to be the strongest by taking the strength of his future child. Boze looks for Sheena, the strongest female giant, and marries her to bear him a son to fulfill the wish. Bose's son, Boji, was born abnormally small for a giant and from then on, Bose vows to form a kingdom so that his son can live a comfortable life. Back at the throne room, Miranjo reveals to Bose that he is no longer the strongest person but it is instead his son, Boji. This gives Bose a sense of amusement while Miranjo tells him that they need to assassinate Queen Healing. Hokuro wakes up next to a headless Domas and vows to go back and report what happened to Queen Healing. Domas tells Hokuro that they will kill him if any one of them goes back after what happened. The two get into a little argument before Doma storms out the door. Hokuro goes back to the castle and reports everything to Queen Healing, who upon hearing of Boji's death, orders Hokuro's execution. On the day of the execution, a disguised Domas tries to save Hokuro from being killed off, but is interrupted by King Bose himself. Domas parries Bose's attack, but is immediately recognized by both Dorshe and Bose through his sword techniques. Bose reveals Domas' identity, and also tells everyone that Boji is actually alive and is currently training in the underworld to become stronger, much to everyone's surprise. Bose then proves to Domas, Dorsha, and Healing that he is not Prince Data, but rather King Bose in Data's body. Meanwhile, Prince Data's true self is stuck in an unknown limbo of complete darkness inside of his own body. The following night, after a tip from King Bose, Dorsha stands guard in front of Healing's chambers, expecting some sort of assassination attempt. Three Hellhounds are soon seen approaching Dorsha. They all fight tooth and nail intensely until Dorsha defeats all of them before collapsing under a pool of his own blood. Miranjo reports that the assassination seems to have somehow failed to a seemingly indifferent King Bose. Dorsha wakes up in Healing's room, covered in scars that are healed presumably by Healing's magic, before she tells him that she too has made up her mind to fight against Bose to get her son back. Healing bursts through the throne room, demanding that Bose return Data immediately. Her shouting someone gets a Data who hears his mother's voice within the darkness he is trapped in. The two call out to each other and Healing discovers Data's voice coming from inside his body. Hysterical about finding her son, Healing grabs a dagger and tries to pierce through Bose in an attempt to free Data but she is knocked unconscious by Dorsha to stop her from doing anything rash to Data's body. Bose reveals that there might not be any more attacks on healing for a while, but it's safer to take her somewhere outside the country with a group of trusted retainers and wait. Despa announces to Kage that Boji has finally completed his training, and reveals Boji's new weapon to Kage, which seems to be a very thin, needle-like sword. They all decide to celebrate by eating out, but Boji's new techniques are quickly put to the test in a bar fight started by Despa, as he explains that Boji's fighting style is one that is very agile and can disable opponents completely without killing them. After eating, Boji and Kage contemplate what they should do next since Boji has officially completed his training. Kage proposes to go back to the kingdom, but Boji becomes visibly upset, thinking that everyone back home, including Healing, might have betrayed him. Kage is shocked when Boji suspects Healing and persuades him that Healing has never betrayed him. Boji realizes his mistake in not believing in others and hits himself to recover from his mental traumas. Inside the dark limbo, Data encounters a young girl who has no hands and no face. Data slowly sees the girl's memories of being tortured by others and vows to help her escape together out of the darkness. In the underworld, Miranja uses her portal to free a bunch of criminals that were locked away. These criminals then quickly take over Bose Kingdom and imprison King Bose who did not put up much of a fight. Back in the underworld, Boji and Despa are told of the circumstances by the captain, who then invites Boji to ride along with him back to Bose Kingdom. Upon hearing the news, Healing and her entourage also hurries back to the kingdom to help retake it. As the criminals take over the throne room, two of the criminals, King Bo and Oaken, get into a fight that ends with King Bo being defeated by Oaken. As Healing's entourage along with Dorsha arrives at the castle, they are greeted by Apis, Miranjo, and several Hellhounds. Dorsha and several knights put up a good fight against the Hellhounds until Gigan, Oaken, and other criminals come in and join the fight, pinning Dorsha to the ground and quickly defeating Anne. 
Healing uses a binding attack magic at Oaken, which causes him to run away, crying towards a nearby settlement. Healing overuses her healing magic to heal Anne and save her life, but she is quickly surrounded by hellhounds. Apis unexpectedly helps healing out in a pinch by throwing his spear at several hellhounds. Surprised at this sudden act of betrayal, Miranjo decides to give healing a momentary break from the onslaught of hellhounds and tells Apis that she'll wait in respect to him. In response, Apis yells out Dorsha's name, which awakens Dorsha, who sees healing surrounded and rushes to her aid in a frenzy. Meanwhile, in a nearby settlement, Auken finds himself in the middle of a town that's being evacuated. He quickly kills all the guards and any nearby townspeople that he encounters, basking in their fears and screams. Boji, along with the captain, finally arrives at the settlement, and he remembers Despa's note to never let Boji fight with Auken due to their incompatibility. The captain tells Boji to run ahead while he keeps Auken busy until Despa arrives. Inside the castle, Apis is ambushed by the criminals Black and Red as he is carrying Miranjo back inside. Black grabs Miranjo and makes a run for it but is quickly found by an irritated Apis. Zoku appears suddenly and apologizes to Apis, seemingly calming him down before poisoning him by surprise and taking Miranjo instead. Dorsha sustains major damage in his fight with the Hellhounds as Healing witnesses in terror. Mitsumara, however, appears out of the blue and helps save Dorsha, telling Healing to heal Dorsha so that he may survive. Just as Healing saves Dorsha's life, however, Gigan threatens to attack the group. Mitsumara fights as best he can but is eventually beaten to the ground, overpowered by Gigan. But Boji arrives and eventually knocks Gigan out. Boji then begs Healing to heal the also injured Mitsumara as Kage gives Healing more potions to help her with the healing. As Healing steadily heals Mitsumara, Gigan wakes up and attacks the group, but Boji breaks Gigan's hammer and incapacitates Gigan again. After healing Mitsumara, Boji hugs Healing in gratitude and the two reconcile for a while. But Gigan wakes up again only to drop to his knees in servitude to Boji, acknowledging his strength. Back in town, the captain is struggling to fight with an immortal Oaken who keeps regenerating. A hidden Dispa quickly calls Desha to summon lightning to his spot and incapacitates Oaken with a strike of lightning. It is then revealed that Oaken used to be Despa and Desha's brother who turned man due to his immortality. Despa quickly binds Oaken with a rope so that he does not cause further damage. Deep underground, Domus and Hokuro finally reach the entrance to the underworld portal. When they open the gates, however, King Desha's troops are already there, coming through from the other side. The two sides can't decide whether or not they are in conflict, but none of them can back down either. Domus is warned not to stand in the way lest he will die. But even so, Domus successfully holds them off alone with his superior sword skills, as Hokuro watches quietly from the side. It all comes to a halt, however, when King Desha joins the fray. As an assassin comes up behind Hokuro, Domus is quickly overpowered by King Desha who states that he does not intend to kill anyone except maybe Bose. Gigan suddenly crashes down carrying Boji and Kage along with him. Upon seeing Boji well and alive, both Domus and Hokuro cry a sense of relief while Boji is visibly upset and traumatized upon meeting Domus again after his betrayal. Upon seeing this, Kage shouts at Domas who then tries to give his life an apology for his betrayal by jumping down this flight of stairs but ultimately fails due to his well-trained physique. Hokuro, upon seeing this, comes to Domas' aid and tells him that killing himself is not the solution and that at the moment, protecting Boji is all that matters. The pleasantries are cut short however when King Desha orders his soldiers to seize Gigan as he is still a criminal. Gigan fights off the soldiers as Kage ineffectively tries to stop the fighting. King Desha ends up striking Gigan with lightning and causes him to pass out. Domas asks who it is King Desha is truly after, to which King Desha replies to be Miranjo, the cause of all this mess. Gigan wakes up in a fit of rage and targets King Desha, who is preparing to shoot another lightning bolt at Gigan, but the bolt is dispelled by Boji, who comes to Gigan's aid. King Desha readies himself for a fight, but Boji throws down his sword to show that he doesn't want to fight. Kage runs up to them and reveals that Boji is Despa's apprentice, which prompts Desha to call Despa and ask about their plan. Despa persuades King Desha to return to the underworld by telling him his plan to capture the Red Demon after they kill off Miranjo. King Desha agrees in exchange for taking Gigan with them as an enlisted officer in the Order of the Underworld. After pondering, Gigan also agrees, then says his goodbyes to Boji and Kage, thanking them on the way out. As the troops leave, Domus and Hokuro confront Boji, who still seemed wary of the two from their past betrayal. Domus apologizes to Boji, but is met with overwhelming disdain from him as he looks away traumatically. Boji runs up the stairs, exiting the labyrinth, followed by Kage who challenges Boji to a race to keep his mind off things. Domus and Hokuro both have a heartfelt moment together over their shared experiences before heading towards the underworld portal to destroy it. At the surface, Boji and Kage encounters Apis laying on the ground. Upon waking him up, Apis explains to Boji about Miranjo's wishes and that he cannot defy Miranjo because he feels he owes her. Apis then tries to fight Boji, before falling to the ground from Boji's strong aura. He acknowledges Boji's strength and wishes he could save everyone, including Miranjo. 
Back in town, Oaken breaks free from his binds and starts running back to the castle towards Miranjo, who is revealed to have summoned Oaken using mind control to protect her from the criminals. Boji arrives and sees Zoku running away. Boji chases Zoku all the way to the castle walls along with Oaken. Zoku tries to poison Boji, but it is ineffective as human poison does not work against giants like Boji. Zoku tries to run away, but Boji strikes and incapacitates Zoku with surgical precision before tying him up with a rope. Oaken climbs down and points his sword towards Boji, who do the same. The two fight it out with Oaken becoming increasingly surprised by Boji's battle prowess, but soon realizes that Boji's fighting style is not particularly useful against his immortality. Meanwhile, Healing and her entourage finds a piece lying on the ground in bad shape and heals his poison as well. The group discusses what has happened and decides to hurry towards Boji to help. Boji is trying to hold out for as long as possible against Oaken until finally Despa and the captain arrives. Despa calls out to Desha for another lightning strike against Oaken, but Oaken learns to redirect the lightning so it does not hit any of his vital organs. Oaken defeats the captain and starts approaching Despa, who manages to pin his arm and hold him still so that both of them could be hit by the lightning. But before that could happen, Oaken stabs Despa in the chest, prompting an angry Boji to attack Oaken again. The two have a brief fight before Oaken gets the upper hand and gets ready to stab Boji. Upon seeing this, Kage desperately runs towards Boji and swallows him whole. But this only prompts Oaken to stab Kage instead in order to get out. Oaken stabs a desperate Boji as well and returns to Muranjo's side. Seeing this, Muranjo takes over Red's body and begins healing Kage to everyone's surprise. Back in the castle, Bebin confronts Bose who is still held in the dungeons. Bose tells Bebin everything about Muranjo's tragic past as well as his memories from before. Bose then asks about the foe Boji is currently facing and how even his powerful son cannot defeat this immortal foe, and that he might have to slay it. Meanwhile, Mitsumara arrives to the scene and fights against Oaken as best he can to hold him off as Bebin and the others begin to arrive one by one. Domus, Bebin, Dorsha, and Apis all fight against Oaken in an intense fight, but are slowly and surely overwhelmed with Oaken's immortality. Boji stands up in his last attempt to fight back as Oaken rushes towards him, but the fight is interrupted by King Bose who had just arrived to the scene. Bosa hits a severely injured Boji and the rest of the group and sends them flying, only to heal all of them using Data's inherited restorative magic from Queen Healing. Consequently, Boji and the group are not fully recovered thanks to the healing. Oaken stands up against the group ready to fight them again, but is quickly confronted by Bose instead in a battle of invisibility versus immortality. Bose hits Oaken and disintegrates him in one powerful hit, but Oaken quickly recovers no matter how many times Bose pummels him down. Thinking for a solution, Bose pulls out a huge boulder from the ground and proceeds to jam a compressed Oaken inside the boulder, preventing him from regenerating back. After defeating Oaken, Bose attempts to give the group an ultimatum, to swear allegiance to him or die fighting to get Data back. After little contemplation, the group instead swears allegiance to Boji and readies themselves to fight King Bose. But Despa points out that only Boji is a match for Bose and that the others who interfere would just die recklessly. Ignoring this, Domas charges Bose in an attempt at the redemption, but is quickly stopped by Boji who incapacitates Domas with a single hit. Boji walks towards King Bose and confronts his father in an intense fight between kings. Boji, however, easily repels any attack Bose throws at him and succeeds in dealing an incapacitating blow to King Bose. The group looks at Boji in awe as their once invisible king Bose is being completely dominated dominated by Boji. King Bosa uses his remaining strength to crawl up to Muranjo and lift up his club in an attempt to break Muranjo, but Boji stops Bosa and incapacitates him with a single thrust. Weakly squirming on the ground, Bosa reveals that he wanted to at least give Data's body back to him by breaking the curse, prompting Muranjo to realize that Bosa never wanted to be brought back and that all this time she could not see his pain. Bosa disagrees and thinks that he is the one neglecting Miranjo's feelings. The two converse about their thoughts and regrets over the years as Miranjo tells Boji to destroy her in order to break the curse and bring Data back. Api steps up to persuade Miranjo to protect herself, but Boji makes up his mind and destroys Miranjo, vowing that he'll free her from the demon. The mirror breaks and releases both Miranjo's and Bosa's soul, which floats up towards the sky. But before it gets too high, the red demon suddenly appears and quickly snatches Miranjo's soul with its mouth. Boji quickly directs Hokuro to shoot the demon with his crossbow, which distracts the demon who does not see Despa summon a lightning bolt right above it. The demon is hit with lightning and falls to the ground, where the captain quickly decapitates its head, allowing Despa to pick it up. Despa states that if the demon ever wants his head returned, he would need to grant him a wish. But before Despa could use the wish to return Oaken back to normal, Data instead uses it to return Miranjo back to life. Both Despa and the captain are visibly upset at Data's action, which prompts Data to apologize and that somehow they'll make it up to them. Seeing Data's resolve, Despa ultimately allows it and settles on being compensated with gold and silver instead. The captain is bewildered as Despa breaks the tough news to King Desha, who surprisingly forgives them and lets it go. Immediately upon hearing the news, King Desha finally accepts the ranking as number one king, hoping that he will get an artifact from the Divine Treasure Vault that can rescue Oaken. After saving Miranjo and having a heartfelt reunion, 
Data reveals that he has seen all of Miranjo's memories mixed up with Bose's memories from the time he was trapped inside his own body. This made Data empathize with Miranjo, who's always been there for him since she was in the mirror. In front of Healing and everyone else, Data announces that he not only plans to marry Miranjo, but also relinquish the throne to Boji so that he may become king. Everyone then huddles together to celebrate Boji's ascension, while Kage leaves the scene, convinced that King Boji now no longer needs a crook like him to be by his side. Boji, however, searches long and hard for Kage, who is nowhere to be found. Visibly upset, Boji goes through the day with a gloomy expression drawn across his face, which prompts Queen Healing to scold Boji for wearing such a sad expression on his face, despite now being king. Healing then tells Boji that he should pursue something if he thinks he's found something important to him instead. Boji rushes into the fields wearing his adventuring getup in search of Kage. The two reunite in the same field they met the very first time, and Boji reveals that he relinquished the throne back to Data, and that he instead plans to form his own kingdom just like his father, King Bos. The two set off on their next adventure under the setting sun. And that is Ranking of Kings Season 1 Recapped. If you enjoyed this recap, remember to click that sub, hit the like button, and comment down below to let me know what you think of the series. I'll see you in the next video.